Coming up next, why are women quitting their careers? And then I'm going to take on the real social dilemma in our society today. We'll take your calls and your chats, and it all starts right now. I am coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do that, and then how you can get there, and you can get there. We're going to look at your contribution through your work, because we believe here on The Ken Coleman Show that you were created on purpose to fill a unique role. And and every human being, really, there is the relational side of who we are, and then there is the professional side. In other words, our relationships and then our work. And that is how we contribute. We contribute to those that we love dearly in our relationships, those that we work closely with through relationships. But we also contribute something to this world. And we all long to contribute something that matters deeply to us. We call it work that matters here. Work that matters to you because you see how it matters to others. You're good at it. You love the work and it creates a result that swells your heart. This is your sweet spot. This is where you were created to contribute. And here's the good news about that intersection. There are multiple jobs, multiple career paths that will have you in your sweet spot. So let's help you figure that out. You're one phone call away. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Let me be your coach. You have the answers, I promise. It's my job to get them out of you. You can also jump into the chat room right there next to the video window as you're watching here on YouTube and keep those questions short, sweet, to the point so that I can answer them to the best of my ability. And if you don't feel like you can do that, watch for a few more days, see what you can learn from others who do call in, and then trust me, I'm never going to make fun of you. We're never going to humiliate you. You are not a prop. You are a person with a purpose, and I believe that. Borrow some of my belief. I don't even ask for it back. That's the good deal there. 844-747-2577. I saw this article the other day, and it really troubles me troubles me deeply and i think as a society we need to wake up to what's happening here and and this is in some ways uh, a bit of a political issue because of the leadership decisions in this country that has caused this challenge the challenge itself is not political but we the people whether you consider yourself left right d r whatever you want to call yourself whatever which way you lean you're going to be troubled by this and this isn't cool nbc news puts this headline out Facing dual challenges of work and homeschooling, more women are sacrificing their careers. I read this and I went, that's not good. Although, quite honestly, not surprising, given the fact that in many states in our great country, kids are still uh, doing remote learning. They're not in school. As virtual schooling ramps up in some areas, women are being forced to make the choice between caring for their children or prioritizing their own career. I'm into the article now. Direct quote from Emily Martin, Vice President of Education and Workplace Justice at the National Women's Law Center. She said, so many schools are opening with distance learning. It certainly is a new set of obligations on parents to help their kids move through the day. And we know that women tend to bear the lion's share of that child care distance learning work. Gabriella Bratt is a marine biologist and mother of three kids ages uh, between the ages of four and 11. She said, It doesn't matter how flexible your bosses and your colleagues are. At some point, things start running into each other. She's been working from home since March, and the conditions are increasingly becoming more stressful. She said, I've thought about quitting a lot because it's untenable. It's not sustainable for any of us. I'm trying to thread that needle to keep my job and still do a good enough job, but then also take care of myself and my husband and my family. Really, it's been tough. I can't even imagine. Mike Matowitz, an economist at the Center for American Progress, said, 
The month of September, October has been a disaster for working women. 865,000 women dropped out of the labor force versus 216,000 men. Nearly half of parents with school-aged kids said school is taking place entirely online. And only 20% of the parents said their children will be in the classroom full-time this year. This is according to an NBC News poll conducted last month. The Federal Reserve's most recent Beige Book, which is a document that details current economic conditions, highlighted the dependence on schools as child care providers as an impediment to economic recovery. Duh! We all saw this coming. Several of the regional Fed banks are saying local employers are still struggling to fill positions or accommodate parents juggling online school and job demands. Deborah Friedman, labor and employment attorney at the law firm of Cozen O'Connor, said one of the long-term impacts of this pandemic may be the reversal of some of the important gains women have made with respect to increased career opportunity and pay quality. They are being forced to make choices between career and family, often resulting in a career setback. All right, folks, here's where my non-political political statement comes in. Some of the people who have championed women in the workforce, progressing in position and pay, are the very same people with draconian lockdowns of school children. I live in the great state of Tennessee. My kids have been going back to school since August. There have not been outbreaks, and children are not dying. Do your own homework on who is most vulnerable. Lockdowns are killing women's careers. At what point do we say enough is enough. My kid needs community. My kid needs collaboration. My kid needs to go back to school. I'll let you answer the question. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577 is the number. Don't forget, coming up a little later, you do not want to miss this. For those of you that have watched the runaway smash hit documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. I've seen it, but I'm going to tell you what the real dilemma is. There's a deeper dilemma than the documentary shares, and I'm going to give you the extra. It's a great documentary. It's a real eye-opener, but I'm going to give you something they didn't discuss, and it's going to be so good. That's coming up, but first, we go to Bloomington, Indiana. Jordan is on the line. Jordan, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hello, Ken. How are you today? I am living the dream, Jordan. What's going on? Well, question that I've got for you is thinking of jumping into the insurance agency that my in-laws own. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few things that are holding me back doing it full time. Um, the first and most important thing I should say is my wife. She doesn't know if I want if she wants me to make that jump because it's been in the family for over 40 years and doesn't want to have the idea down the road of owning an agency, um, which I am starting to show signs that I may want to. But the more important thing is, is there's a lack of health insurance benefit. They do not offer health insurance because they're a small independent insurance agency. Mm -hmm. And, and then the other thing is, is, um, I am a, it's a single income family because my wife is a stay at home mom with, two of our two girls that are two and under. Mm -hmm. So just trying to make the money ideal work as well. But I have a strong desire to help and serve people and getting people the right price and the right insurance coverage that they need. Okay. What do you do currently for a I'm living? Currently in an, I'm a, a currently an accounting person and an accounts receivable. And it's I've done it for over four years. Um, the thing was, is when I started originally, I was thinking to grow within the company, um, not just being there cause it was my first job out of college. Okay. So it was, I've given ample product suggestions and presentations to help grow myself within the company and desiring to take on new tasks. Um, I've asked supervisors for extra professional development, but haven't received anything, but like a day or two's worth of professional development, mm -hmm. try to help myself grow. Um, but that's why during this pandemic, I went ahead and got 
my insurance license. Mm-hmm. Uh, my in-laws helped make that possible. I'm curious. And, let me um, let me interrupt you for a second. Yeah. Um, it's pretty obvious that there's no ladder in your current company. But had they... I, my question is, and this may be a bit unfair, but I, but I think it's driving at a deeper issue that I need to know before I weigh in on the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Had they developed you and built into you and promoted you was there a was there a vision that that was leading to what was that first of all was there a vision yes or no the vision was yes um, what was it was the, the, to promote me within three to three to four years right but i'm and saying what was your vision did you want to keep going up in the accounting industry and eventually end up as a c-suiter i mean what was your vision prior to realizing that the, you've got a lid on you the the vision was of eventually trying to but i needed to i needed the help and knowledge to see if accounting was something i wanted to continue okay to so you never were completely clear on on accounting no okay I, good honestly it, it was the first it was the first job that eventually okay. when i got out of college all right i got it i needed to have one all right that's what i that's all i needed to know I, i'm just trying yeah. to see what's driving this insurance decision so so we need to address a couple of things um and let's take on the easiest one, which is the single income. Uh, what do you currently make in your job? Currently, I'm making just under forty-five. All right. So, um, what would you make if you went to work for um, mother-in-law and father-in-law? That's a good question. Because um, right now, I'm just doing it based on commission when I'm doing it on the side. But I don't know the actual salary figure all the way because we haven't bridged that full gap. Well, you can't. You can't consider this any further until that's till that's answered well because i know i do know this the salaries for an is it almost equivalent to what i'd be making at the same place well you just told me less. well you told me a minute ago that you didn't know well the reason i said i didn't know was because they they go based off a lot of commission on how you get things mm-hmm. but there's a there's an hourly rate that a lot of the agents get and mm-hmm. i've kind of owned those out because not a lot of the agents are actively pursuing okay all right commission so, commission okay so what i want to know is do you feel confident that that number okay i can make just about what i'm gonna what i'm making now is that in your first year or is that over the lifetime or is there a ladder where you can eventually make double and maybe triple eventually it could be double or triple okay so there's a lot of opportunity there which i would assume if yes. you really kill it okay all right all right so that's a positive um and you're doing it on the side already correct yes how much correct. are you, how much additional money are you making per month um because it's hard to say because the commissions come on quarterly basis ballpark for, for ballpark probably 400 to 500 so it's not least. a lot yet uh, actually let me let me phrase that because they're paying me hourly while i'm at the at their office because currently i have a nice gig to where I'm working remotely at their office because our office is still shut down because of COVID. Okay, I got it. All right, so um, I like the idea of you, if we get past the other two issues, which we're going to dive into now, I, I like the idea of you doing this on the side and do not leave accounting the accounting job uh, until you've got uh, six months of your current salary in the bank. That would be the minimum. Uh, or you've gotten to a point where you've replaced it. Mm-hmm. I just I just would stack the extra money. Sure. All right. Now, the wife is holding you back concerns me. The insurance benefit does not concern me because um, that's another reason why I'd want you to do this on the side for a while until you you've almost replaced your income completely. You know, where you so essentially you've doubled your income. I'd love to see you double your income before you walk away is where I'm going with that because that will allow you to pay f- to absorb that insurance cost. But paying for your own insurance, not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. I would never not make a decision based on that. The reason why I've thought of making the decision within there, though, is I know we're paying $500 a month for the health insurance at my current company. So So what would the cost be if you had to do it on your own? outsourcing wise my my in-laws because they buy theirs outsource and obviously they're older and they're um problems have a little bit higher they're paying 1700 i'm paying 500 there's a 1200 dollars gap 
but I, I have kids. They don't have any kids on their planet. Anymore. Right, but you don't have answers. You need answers. You can't make okay. a decision until you have answers. You've mm-hmm. got to run the numbers. Okay. You know? you got to run the numbers. What are all my options sure. from a healthcare standpoint? What's that really going to cost me? But again, again, you have a bigger issue. Your wife doesn't want you to do it, and you've got to get her on board. And it's not as much as I don't believe she doesn't want me because she, she's fine with me being an insurance agent. She just doesn't want me one day down the road to own the agency. Well, but again, you want to own an agency. That's what you said in the first 60 seconds. So that's a ch- still that's a challenge. Correct. Right. So yeah. here's my point. You've got to cast a vision for her. But before you cast vision, you need to actually really know what's concerning her about this. Do you know specifically what her concerns are? Yes, and we've talked about those in depth. Of her concern is the late nights that her parents have had to deal with, right. and a lot of things. Of okay, the hold agency. on. So hold on, because our time is limited. I got to move on, but sure. I want to make sure, sure you understand with homework assignment. Have you addressed all of those concerns and put things in place where she goes, okay, uh, Jordan is aware of it, and he's convinced me, and he's got a plan in place that that'll never be a problem. Have you addressed it that detailed? That's a good question. No. The answer to that is no. Okay. It hasn't been fully you it have hasn't to. been fully detailed because I don't I don't know the full answers because I don't have that. Right. So here's my point. So my yet. point is stay part time with the parents so that you can get the answers you need. You need the health care answers, you need the hours answers, you need to know why they did what they did. They may I think honestly that your wife needs to know that they did what they did because they didn't actually care enough to put boundaries in place or they didn't know how to put boundaries in place. And I think you can delegate. Simple delegation and organization probably solves the late night issue. Okay? Other than the yeah, as an insurance agent, you're going to get some emergency calls sometimes, but it's not it's not every night. So you got to address those things. You got some homework to do. Get the answers that you and I just discovered you don't have and and then do what I told you to do and you're going to be fine. I think you eventually just kind of waltz right into it full time. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Rochester, New York. Dan is on the line there. Dan, you're on the Ken Coleman show. Hi, how you doing? I'm living the dream, Dan. What's going on? Uh, I'd like to live the dream too. Um, I... I got a question. I, I'm trying to figure out. I got uh, three uh, degrees in in, in communications, uh, video and stuff, and I, I've never actually worked in that field. I I, I want to. I, I kind of. I'm not sure how to get into that field. What is the field? Without an experience, uh, video. I I actually my dream, my passion is actually to do uh, video editing. Okay. So the no, challenge is, Dan, you have a degree in video editing or at least something uh, similar to that? I have, I have two, well, two associates, almost a third associates, uh, communication, visual communications, and uh, new media. Okay, great. So it sounds like on, on, on the education front, you've got, you've got an impressive resume, correct? Uh, well, obviously not enough because I can't get no, uh, the no, interview. No, 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 no. And I, I'm in, you know, I should, I'm older, so. How I, old are you? Uh, 46. Are you kidding me right now, Dan? Really? That's your perception of yourself that at 46, you're older? People look. Well, hey, hold on a second. There, there, I, hold on a second. Hold on. I'm 46, Dan. Watch yourself. But they hire they they they'd rather hire younger people out of right out of college. Mm, uh, that's that's false. That's just a perception that you have. Um, have you done your homework on what those positions that you've applied for? I mean, I'm assuming you've done enough applying. You've done enough nosing around. You know what those positions pay that you want. Have you done that? Um, y- yeah. How much do um, they pay? Yeah, is that Absolutely. enough for you? Would you be thrilled if I gave you a video, video editing job today between 60 and 80? I do for 50. <laughs> exactly. So don't tell me that they prefer young guys out of school, certainly at that salary range. What people want is somebody that's good, yes or no? 
Uh, yeah, but with no ex- no actual experience. Uh, like, okay, but uh, hold on a second, Dan. I'm trying to get you there, brother, but you sound like Eeyore on the other end of the phone. you got to start believing, first of all. I understand that you've had a probably a frustrating journey. You've probably had how many interviews and how many uh, uh, applications that you've submitted to try to get into video editing. Give me a ballpark. Um... Probably at least 20 over the years. How many years? um, Well, since off and on, since um, since my first year, and I was uh, 22. 22? So so you've had this this video desire to be a video editor, and you've had this training since the age of 22? Well, I've actually wanted to do it since I was in high school. Okay, so here's my point. Have you ever done any video editing for anybody? Your church? Uh, um, yeah, through in college, when I was in college. And, and were you good uh, at it? I think I was. No, 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 no. Were you good at it? Yeah. Yes. Say yeah. it. Dan, come on, man. If I Here's the deal. If I made a phone call today... And I got you the gig. And I said, I called you up. I said, Dan, I got you a video editing gig, man. There's no chance they're going to fire you. They know you've got the raw skill. They know you've got the education. They know you don't have a ton of experience, but they just want a good person, and they'll they'll help bring them along. You're going to have a senior editor that kind of you report to, and they can teach you the thing. Uh, how confident are you you can do this job, Dan? What would you say to me? I could definitely do it. Okay, so Dan, here's the deal. I think you're down. Would you agree with me that you're you've got some borderline depression over this whole situation? Well, I just I've I've never really had a quote good career. Yeah, but 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 Dan, Dan, are you down on yourself? Yes or no? Um, not well. It, as far as okay, let me, rise, let yeah. me yeah, you are. Let me answer your question for you. You're down on yourself, and so and it's understandable. So I want to encourage you for a second. I understand why you're down on yourself. It doesn't make you a bad guy. It doesn't make you weak. But you must first understand how down you are, and understand how that's affecting your ability to actually get yourself back out there and put yourself out there you've been rejected enough that it kind of hurts and it kind of feels like i'm never going to get my chance and so you kind of called the day as a hail mary is that right yeah i've been trying to to, uh all right so listen to me do it for a while all right but here's what i want you to do i want you to find do you go to church or are you involved in any kind of community groups or nonprofits or charities do you have any connections to anything like that no Okay, but how many people do you know in Rochester, New York, Dan? Uh, I know, I don't know, a, a few, but not really in the, in right. the field. You, well, it doesn't matter. You're not catching my point. Here's the deal. I want you to think of your friends, and I want you to think of your family. I want you to think of your acquaintances, former coworkers, current coworkers, and I want you to start putting the word out that if anybody needs help with video editing for maybe their blog uh, or for their Instagram page, anything, just offer your services. Say, hey, I'll do it for free. And then I want you to get your juice back to start editing small videos for people and blowing their mind and they got a smile on their face and you're going to start to feel that and you're going to get the juice back and then eventually you're going to get a couple side gigs here and there and you go, hey, I'll do the editing for you and most people are doing it for uh, 80 bucks an hour. I'll do it for 50 or whatever it is. Nathan, do you have any idea what a going rate is for uh, for um, uh, hold on the line, Dan, I'm, I'm going to get you some info. Hey, Joe, pull Nathan's mic up, please. Uh, Nathan knows this stuff. Uh, he's in the industry. He's, he's the uh, director of the show here. It's just a ballpark idea of, of what a fair rate for a guy like Dan, Rochester, New York, to charge. That would be very competitive or almost to the point that it's an unbelievable deal. Uh, I would probably say about anywhere between 20 to $30 an hour. All right, so Dan, you're going to charge eventually. I want you to do a bunch of free stuff first, right? 
to get your portfolio going and get your juice going. And then eventually I want you to come in and start offering and you just got to get yourself out there and let people know and offer to do it for 20, 30 bucks an hour and let's build it up on the side. But I'm going to give you the proximity principle. Okay, hang on the line. Now, listen to me, Dan. Madison's going to pick you up right now and I'm going to give you either the uh, audio, the uh, ebook or the hard copy of my book, The Proximity Principle. Dan, all you've got to do is start figuring out who are the people that do video editing and how can I get in front of them? And you've got to get some confidence, man. When you talk to them, you can't talk to them the way you talk to me. You got to be like, hey, uh, we have a mutual connection and I do video editing on the side. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to go full time with it. Got got a lot of education stuff, uh, but but anyway, I can help. Uh, I, I'll, I've, I'll shadow. Uh, I just want to get around and help. I'll be an extra set of hands, um, whatever it takes. And I wrote the book for somebody exactly like you. You know exactly what you want to do, but you don't know how to break in. Well, the proximity principle says in order to do what Dan wants to do, you got to be around video editors, people that are doing it. And then you got to get in places where that type of work is happening. And if you got a volunteer shadow work for free, you get the idea. Um, that's how it gets going. But you're 46. You're not 76. Come on, man. Believe. Get after it. 844-747-2577. Let's go to the chat room real quick. Take a couple questions. And then, oh, I'm excited about this one. I told Joe I walked into the control room for the show and I said, I'm ready to go. We're going to talk about the real social dilemma with social media and what it's really doing to the real you. That's coming up. So first, let's go to Martina in the chat room. She says, I'm talented in computer networking, but I have a passion to help others through nursing. How do I know which one to pursue? Well, now, this is a, a perfect example of a, I prefer you to call in and let me kind of dissect this. But this is the simple answer based on not being able to go back and forth. I want you to sit down one day in a quiet place and I want you to have something to write with in a journal type situation that you can process your thoughts and, and get them out of your head and on the paper. But this is the question that you need to answer and the, the act of getting your thoughts out and journaling through this big question is going to, I think, get you to a point where you can choose. So the thought is you get quiet and you can close your eyes, keep your eyes open. I don't care, but I want you to picture an absolute desired future, something that is that is way down the path and it is a vision, a dream in each of those career fields. So where would you take computer networking? What would be that ladder if you kept climbing and where would it take you? What would be the position, the type of work? kind of money would you be making? How would that affect your life? You've got to run that dream all the way out. And again, the journaling process, some of the detailed, nuanced answers to that question, write them down so you can see them. Well, I'd want to do this and, I'd, I'd, you know, I would be doing this all day and, 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 and I'd be making this kind of money and, and that would allow me to do this and whatever. Now, same exact exercise with nursing. And you do that, and when you've got notes and, and journaled thoughts and a true desired future, a vision for what great success would look like in each path, on each path, then you look at those side by side and picture me saying, all right, both of those futures are available because I believe they are, but you can only choose one. Which one do you choose? And I think that uh, ends up becoming your answer. But something that we have seen, little nugget here, Martina, to throw on the end. We've seen this with several phone calls where people call me and they say, Ken, I, I love this, but I also love this. And many times after essentially walking people through the process I just gave you to do, we find out that they can do both. But one is going to be more full-time. Maybe one is a charitable contribution giving of that time and talent or one's a side hustle that brings an extra income and lots of freedom that comes with more money but you've got a full-time endeavor as well so for anybody that's watching who goes through a similar process like that and you're kind of choosing um, once you do that first process also go could i do both what would that look like how would i do that 
those are the kind of things that are really, really fun to explore. All right, Nicholas Boss writes in, I want to start a business, but do not know what industry to get into. How should I decide? Okay, this is really the the three-question process I teach for discovering mission results that matter most to you. So for somebody trying to figure out what's my business idea or the entrepreneurial idea, I know I just want to work for myself, but I don't know what I want to do. So three questions. Number one, who are the people that you most want to help? So who are the customers, the type of consumers? Who are those people that you want to help? Secondly, what's the problem, the challenge that those people have? You just thought of them. So it should be very easy for you to go, oh, this is the challenge they have, the problem they have, or desire they have. So if you you go, oh, I want to help women feel beautiful. Oh, okay. Well, what's that desire? Well, they desire to be beautiful. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to help them with makeup or shoes or dresses, whatever it is. So you, that's the second question. And the third question is, what's the solution? So what are you going to do? Are you going to be a reseller? Or you want to be a designer, a manufacturer of shoes or makeup or whatever it is. So you start thinking through that. And those three questions are going to give you some really, really specific answers if you sit with them long enough. And don't get discouraged. The brain will do the work. So you may have to do this over a period of days or weeks. But the brain and the heart will eventually connect with those three clarifying questions. And that's how you do that. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577. So what is the real social dilemma that social media is creating? I, like millions, have watched uh, The Social Dilemma on Netflix, and it was eye-opening. And uh, Some of it was really, really scary. Some of it was intriguing. And uh, a lot of it was troubling. And I think everybody should watch it because uh, I, I think it is, uh, I think it's spot on and it's coming from the very people who've created these platforms and the people that know how to suck our eyeballs in. But as I was watching it, and they touched on certain pieces of what I'm about to share, but what it did for me was crystallize something I've been troubled by for a while. And I've actually mentioned it on the show multiple times, but I want to reset it. The real social dilemma that social media is creating is that social media is changing the real you. It is confusing who you really are. It's confusing you. It is confusing your identity. It is stifling your voice. I just want that to sit for just a second. All right, now, how is it doing this? Two ways. The real problem with social media is is two things. Number one, the very nature of social media is, is that when we engage in it, we go from whatever we're doing to, uh, let's let's use the device as the example, we go into the device and we get into it and we are instantly consuming everybody else's thoughts or preferences before we even formulate our own thoughts or identify our preferences because we are essentially becoming a voyeur. Tweet, Facebook post, Instagram post, TikTok, whatever it is. We instantly become consumers of other people's thoughts, preferences, artistic expressions, political opinions. You get it. And our brain is a supercomputer. So we consume all of these things we've got all this intake 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 and when we intake and then actually reflect on what we've taken in and i understand with every post we don't 
actually let every post absorb into our brain, but many we do. And now it's in there. And now what we focus on changes how we act. What we think about is how we act. It's that simple. It's not my opinion. Neuroscience backs that up over and over and over again. So that leads to the second problem. Our tribal nature. As human beings, we all want to belong, period. We just do. We want to belong to a tribe. So, you know, it's 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 why it's like why women go to the bathroom together, right? It, they, they just they can't go to the bathroom on their own. They got to go with at least one other gal. You know, it's why dudes, you know, can't go out and do yard work without running into another guy and you stand on the street and solve the world's problems for 45 minutes. You know, we're all tribal. And we, we desire to belong. So now take that really pure human element that we all desire to belong to a tribe and combine it with social media that as soon as we go on social media, we see everybody else's thoughts and we see everybody else's expressions and, and opinions and everything else. And we go, oh, wow, this is trending right now. Why is it trending? And, 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 and we look. And we go, oh my gosh, a lot of people think this. Should I think this? Do I think this? I'm keeping it real, aren't I, folks? And so that's the social dilemma. Is that when we combine that desire to belong with this consumption of everybody else's stuff, we get confused. Well, I, I, I don't know that I think that. I, I, I don't know if I believe that. That doesn't upset me. Should it upset me? And all of a sudden, it, it, this unbelievable confusion happens, and guess what that leads to? I'm afraid. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to take a position. I'm. I'm. I'm afraid. What do I do? What do I do? I. I Oh gosh. Okay, I just got to go along with it because I I don't want anybody to think that I I that I don't belong and I don't I don't want disapproval and I don't want anybody to criticize me. And so you begin to believe things that you haven't thought about. You begin to act in a way that you don't even truly understand because you simply want to belong or you don't want to stick out from the crowd. So what's the solution to this? I'm going to give you four things that I think you need to consider and do. Number one, when you're engaging in social media and you see something what, that's trending or there's a pattern and, and it's a thing and it, it instantly doesn't feel right to you, you've got to listen to that and so you ignore it. You've got a couple options. I'm going to give you four options. Number one, ignore it. I see stuff on social media all the time and I immediately go, that doesn't square with me, don't make any sense to me, I don't believe that, and I just go, boop, done, ignore it. I'm not even going to engage in that. I'm ignoring that. Moving on. Number two, if it intrigues you and you go, huh, I hadn't thought that, I don't know that I believe that, but it doesn't feel off to me, it doesn't immediately give me a, whoa, lean into it and research it. Don't just assume that because somebody else said it differently or thinks differently that you're wrong or that you don't have the right perspective, but research it. Dive in. There's nothing wrong with that. That's healthy. Number three, filter it. If something is said or something is put out there and you don't have a big, nah, that's not right, but you actually understand the issue and you don't need to research it, but it's different than, but there's some of it that makes you think, filter it. Take the part that makes you think, that makes you consider. And that's another positive reaction. And then fourth, stop looking to social media for that tribal belonging. Oh, see, so you can do all three of these or you can do none of the first three and just do number four. And just start to go, you know what? I'm going to limit my social media intake. I think that's probably what the social dilemma folks would tell you. 
But the but, but again, as I started this off, the real dilemma is that you are losing your identity. You are losing your voice because you're so hung up in what the masses are saying and doing. So stop looking to social media for belonging and actually find men and women who think like you and act like you or have uh, similar desires and ambitions and goals and values. That doesn't mean you wall yourself off from the rest of the world. But birds of a feather flock together. That's a thing, and it should be a thing. It's what makes this world so beautiful. But we live in a day and age where it's now a social offense and a social crime for you to go, you know what, this is what I think, this is what I believe, and I like to hang out with those people who think and believe that too, and uh, I can think what I think and believe what I believe and do what I do and also not violate your ability to do it. But don't shame me because I'm not like you. It's time for us as people, citizens of this glorious creation called Earth, to wake up to what's really going on. And while social media has its positives and has its power that can be used for good, one of the real negatives has been the loss of true identity. And that is what I'm concerned about because I know that you were uniquely created to fill a unique role in this world. And you don't have to have everybody else's approval and you don't have to fly or swim with the crowd. In fact, march to the beat of your own drum. And to be able to do that effectively, you got to understand that social media can take that very identity away from you and you don't even realize it. Consider that. Well, my time is almost up. But before I let you go, I want you to know that you matter. You do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.